You guys already know that North Naperville Autos is the number one dealer of used cars in the Chicagoland area, but they are now offering shipping on all of their online purchases. That's right, if you buy a car at North Naperville Autos online, it'll be shipped directly to your front door. What's up guys, my name is Zach and today I am driving a 2007 Hyundai Veracruz Limited. Up front is a 3.8 liter V6 and down below is a six speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Veracruz because I don't know what it is quite frankly. I don't really see them all that much. They weren't built all that much and we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. This is something unique and different from the 2000s that is only going to become more and more rare. But before we get on with the rest of the video, I have a website zachpradle.com where you can submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me or if you'd like to buy merch and stickers, I currently have a retro sticker pack for sale and of course you can read my blog for some behind the scenes postings and things like that. And with buying merch, it helps keep ad reads away from my videos, so I thank you for that. But let's get back to that 3.8 liter V6. Well, it's actually out of the Hyundai Genesis Coupe and other Hyundai Genesis products from back in the day. It makes 260 horsepower, which isn't too bad. Now, there was a 3 liter V6 offered as well, and actually overseas, you could also get a 3 liter diesel. We did not get that option here in the States. But 260 horsepower in a three row SUV isn't terrible. Is this thing going to put down insane lap times at the Nurburgring? No, of course not. It's a three row SUV. It's not meant to. But I think 260 is pretty respectable for this class. Like I said, paired to it is a six speed automatic transmission. That was the only transmission offered here in the Veracruz and it's doing fine. It's an automatic transmission. What can you do? Last but not least, this particular limited Veracruz is front wheel drive. However, there was an all wheel drive model offered as well. If that's something you'd like to seek out. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three gauges. On the left is my tachometer. In the center is my speedometer. And on the right, I have my coolant temperature and fuel. Pretty basic here. You do get some slight blue accents, which I really like in the screen and in your gear selector, as well as on the speedometer, you get a little blue haze, which is a nice little touch, but very 2000s. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my volume controls, skip track, mute, and mode. And on the right, I have my cruise control options. Again, very basic Hyundai steering wheel. Off to the left, I have my fog lights, gauge dimmer switch, and traction control off, as well as I do have pedal adjusters, which is very, very nice for a vehicle like this. And I can turn on and off the AC 115 volt outlet in the back. We'll talk about that when we talk about the cargo space. I also have my power tailgate button right here, which is a very nice feature again for 2007 and for any SUV at all. Moving on to the door up top, I have two different memory seat options. I have my power mirrors, power locks, and power windows. And this is where you first start to notice the saddle leather brown accents on the door. I have this sort of perforated leather with the wood part of the limited package. Moving into the center, I have a small digital clock with the outside temperature on it. And then I have like disc changer radio. So I do have CDs that I can put in. And this is an infinity sound system, which I haven't seen too much in cars since the 2000s, but it sounds pretty decent nevertheless. Also off to the left of the radio, I do have the key insert, which is interesting. You can put the key in and turn it, or you can just leave the key in your pocket and just turn that little knob. Kind of interesting they let you have it both ways. Down below that we have our climate controls, a nice digital readout. It also has dual zone climate and auto climate, which is very, very nice mode off. Tons of different options here in the Veracruz for your air conditioning and heating options. Down below that I have a little cubby that is actually soft open, which is kind of interesting. I feel like this wouldn't particularly need a soft open cubby. But there it is. Down below, we have a soft open ashtray as well as a soft open extra cubby with a 12 volt outlet in it. So a lot of soft opening materials or soft opening doors in this car. Moving around the shifter, of course, we have the shifter itself. I can plus minus if I'd like to, if that's something I want, as well as I do have heated seats off to the left and right labeled left and right for the driver and passenger. However, what's interesting is that not only are these buttons pretty big for the heated seats, the lights illuminating what heat level you want are huge as well. 
there is no missing these heated seats in the Veracruz. Down below that, we do have cup holders, so we'll do a big friggin' bottle test, and they look promising, and it passes! Look at that! Hyundai knew what they were doing in this era. I recently drove a Hyundai Accent hatchback that passed as well. That was from 2014, so 2007 to 2014, so far, looking very good for Hyundai. <laughs> The center console is dual purpose, so I do have this upper little top lid I can open, but then the bottom one is a cool box. What does that mean? Well, it's basically like a refrigerator. It won't get as cold as a refrigerator, and it doesn't have this type of refrigerant that your at-home refrigerator would have, but if you put things in here and turn it on, it will keep things cooler than if they were just sitting out. So. If you have a cold iced tea you'd like to bring along for the end of your drive, you can keep it cool in there. That's pretty cool and something I've only really seen in like the Toyota Land Cruiser. But now we got to talk about the seats. The seats say Veracruz on them and they are finished in the saddle leather brown. I thought this color combo is so interesting and weird. That's why I was sort of gravitated to this vehicle. Other reasons that we'll get to later. But the seats are nice and comfortable. The driver's seat is power, memory, and heated, as well as the passenger seat is heated as well. But speaking of seats, this is a three-row SUV, so let's go do some backseat reviews. All right, so on the back of the 2007 Hyundai Veracruz Limited, and a couple of things to note back here. First of all, knee room isn't as spacious as I would have thought. Is it bad? No, it's not what I'm saying. But my knees come closer to hitting the front seat than I would have liked. Are they hitting the front seat? No, so I'll stop talking about it. Down below, I do have my own climate controls. I have my little CD DVD player. I have a 12 volt outlet and RCA inputs as well. So if I'd like to hook up an Xbox 360, I can absolutely do that back here. I do have opening cup holders as well, which also do fit the big friggin' bottle. Kind of impressive there. We can close that back up. I have another center console here with more headphones. These headphones have been thoroughly used. And the Hyundai rear seat entertainment. It's kind of cool. I'm not sure a lot of people have used this remote before. It has its own little pocket there and you can fold up these headphones and whatnot. This also folds up into the back of the seat. But what I've been talking about for those headphones and DVD player is that I actually do get a little screen here. It's about the size of an original iPad or something like that. So I do have rear seat entertainment for the kiddos, as well as I do have these vents in the ceiling. I love when cars do this. Makes me not only think that I'm in an airplane, but it's just nice to get some climate controls back here and not be completely forgotten about. There is a third row to the Veracruz, so I'm gonna try to weasel my way back there. All right, so in the back, back of the Veracruz, headroom not great. Legroom isn't terrible, but it's also not good either. What I do like about these seats going down is that the, for lifting them back up, they actually have built-in sturdy handles on the back, which I think is an oversight of a lot of other SUVs because they just expect you to kind of pull it up from the front. Well, it's nice to have a handle on the back for sure. And when they are in place, I have a nice grab handle right here in case the road gets rough or whatnot. I think that's an overlooked thing that not a lot of SUVs or really almost any SUVs I can think of actually have. But once we're back here, I do get a giant infinity speaker over here. I get a cup holder over here, as well as a little storage compartment. And I get a 12 volt outlet and a AC 115 volt, 150 watt outlet back here, a wall outlet which is really, really nice. And that's what was controllable up next to the steering wheel. Kind of interesting there. Let's hop around back. We'll fold these seats down and talk about some cargo space. All right, so around the back of the Veracruz, like I said, it does have a power tailgate. One hit of the button there. And then as you can see, it starts going up. Not the fastest thing in the world, but it's also not the newest thing in the world. Lever here, push, lever here, push. And there we go, that's our cargo space. That was so I could get in and out. Tons of space back here when you do put down the third seat. Now, with the third row up, you're not gonna have nearly as much space, but that's pretty normal for vehicles in this segment. It's not a Suburban. Open this up, we do have some extra storage down here for the jack and first aid kit things like that, but nothing too crazy. That's the trunk space, cargo space of the Veracruz. And then when you're done, just hit that button. It beeps at you and lowers it nice and smooth.
Now we got to talk about the looks. And honestly, I think the Veracruz is pretty bland. It doesn't really catch my eye in any certain way besides that name Veracruz. We'll talk about in a second. This is finished in natural khaki metallic. Again, with that saddle leather, I thought that this was a very interesting color combo. And it's a nice khaki color, but I don't know if it would be my first pick. Now, as I've been talking, this is the Limited, which was the top trim of the Veracruz offered. There's the GLS, the SE, and Limited. And with those trims, this car was only sold for four years, 2007 to 2011. So that plays into my final thoughts. Let's talk about it. Like I said, very limited production run on this here Veracruz. And in their first year, they sold 12,000 Veracruzes and it slowly dwindled down to their final year here in the United States. They only sold 9,000 of them. Now, 12,000 cars, that's a lot of cars. But when you put it next to its competitors, it's not. That same year that the Veracruz sold 12,589, the Honda Pilot, a competitor, sold 117,146. And the Toyota Highlander, another competitor, sold 127,878 units in the same year. 12,000 comparatively to its rivals ain't a thing but a chicken wing. But my question is, why didn't this sell all that well? Because I'm looking at all the pieces and it has a decent amount of tech. It has the Infinity sound system. It has that 3.8 liter out of the Hyundai Genesis. It has the heated seats. It's a three row SUV, power tailgate, cool box in the center console. And to push that further, it also got one of the top safety picks for 2007 being one of the safest SUVs you could buy. And to even push my point further, Hyundai came to the US in 1986. So it's not like Hyundai was brand new and three row SUVs have been around since like the 1940s. So why didn't this thing sell? Was it the name Veracruz? Because no one knows what that name is. And I keep wanting to call it the Veracruiser, which that name actually comes from a city in Mexico and keeps with the theme of a lot of Kias being named after cities or beach towns, such as Santa Fe, Tucson, Santa Cruz, Rio, Telluride, those are all cities. I don't know. It's honestly puzzling to me why this thing failed. It has to have been brand recognition. And if you have your theories, please leave it in the comment section down below. I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. Because for my money, I can't figure it out. They weren't unsafe. Hyundai wasn't unknown. They didn't have terrible features. The engine is good. I don't know. But I'm so thankful that I was able to get behind the wheel of one, something that not a lot of people can say that they've driven. And that is thanks to North Naperville Autos. They are absolutely awesome. This is one of their used vehicles. They offer financing, shipping, and they are Carfax certified, which is just fantastic. So if you're anywhere in the country, you can buy off their website. And I highly recommend that you do. They have great customer service. They're fantastic to work with. And that's why I keep coming back to them time and time again. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.